before it's too late. While Australia still has some of the world's most unique species, in the last 200 years, Australia has seen the worst level of extinctions than any other country on the face of the earth. It had at least 144 species of marsupials. Today, 10 of those have disappeared, and another 19 are on the endangered list. While Australians may think they are conservation-minded, they have the worst reputation on record. In the past two centuries, scores of species of mammals, birds, insects and plants have become extinct. The most famous of all being the Tasmanian tiger, or thylacine. A marsupial wolf, it was hunted to extinction. This was the last one. It died out during the 1930s, along with its species. And today there are many, many more species going exactly the same way. The woily or brush-tailed betong. The chudich or quoll. The numbat. The long-nosed potteroo. And the incredibly fragile honey possum. These are but a few of the mini marsupials that are teetering on the edge of extinction. But there are people fighting to save them before it's too late. Australia is known for its vast outback, its big blue skies, its scrub, its huge red and grey deserts that seem to go on forever. The deserts that change from dust to the perfect floral arrangements once the rains come. But as well as its endless deserts and scrubland, it used to have seemingly endless forests. But over the past 100 years or so, those forests have been replaced by seemingly endless farmland. Paddocks and fields that stretch as far as the eye can see and beyond. This is the result of ill-conceived and what is turning out to be disastrous land clearing encouraged by ill-informed governments. Since the 1930s, millions and millions of acres have been cleared. In fact, 40% of the country's forests have gone, including 75% of rainforests and 90% of Mali and temperate woodland. The legacy, like insidious rising damp, the water table has risen to the surface, bringing with it deadly sorts that render the soil useless, killing anything that tries to grow there. The result is that today more than six and a quarter million acres of farmland is now totally useless. And it's feared that within the next two decades, as much as 40% of farmland in Western and southeastern Australia will have been ruined because of salinity. It's about as serious as you could get. Uh, I think um, just judging by what's happened in, say, my professional lifetime, I would say another two or three decades and uh, almost nothing could be left. Professor Don Bradshaw is head of zoology at the University of Western Australia and is currently in the process of establishing a course in conservation management. He says, although ignorance is to blame, we should have known better. Things should never have got this bad. The politicians should have known better. You go back to, uh, to Charles Court, the father of our Premier, who boasted about clearing a million, million acres a year and actually did much better than that. And the clearing of the marginal lands, which in my opinion should never have been cleared at all. 
And he says this land clearing is one of the greatest causes of extinctions and is a continuing threat to Australia's surviving endangered species. For example, he talks about the betong, a mini kangaroo that likes to make its home underground. It once roamed over the whole of southern Australia, from the west coast for thousands of miles to the east coast. But by the late 1980s, it was extinct on the mainland. Its only refuge was on remote offshore islands. Today, because of the work carried out by Professor Bradshaw and people like him, these animals have been reintroduced back onto the mainland and are fighting their way back from the very brink of extinction. But that's not the end of the problem. Although these animals are being brought back and reintroduced, they have other enemies to deal with. <laughs> 